Hey, Pavi. Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to your graduation call. Uh, it's, it's been amazing uh, to see the kind of progress uh, that you have shown in the last eight months. And I'm super excited to have a conversation with you, Pavi. How does that make you feel? Thank you so much, Vidya. That should be my first words, you know, like uh, you've been a great mentor because without you, uh, I don't think I would have come this far. It's just not like uh, you're not a typical uh, mentor. I mean, the trainers or a, a nutritionist who like just lay out a plan and okay, this is it. This is what you have to do for this week. This is what you have to eat for this week. You are not that kind of uh, mentor or trainer. So you were focusing on all aspects of, uh, I mean, of your client, you know, just not the uh, physical being, just uh, as well as the mental part. So that's what I liked really about you. You know, you went above and beyond like what, uh, what you were, uh, I mean, taking up for your clients. So uh, I'm happy right now because uh, I think I recorded my uh, uh, progress yesterday and I could see that huge difference in the before and after pictures. Uh, I, I'm not about to wait. A lot of, uh, I think, inch loss that I could see and my clothes fitting really good. I moved from XL to now I'm in a large and medium category. So <laughs> that's like large is also a little loose for me. But anyways, I'm, I think I'm getting, going to that medium category right now. And, uh, uh, I, you know, I'm, fe I'm so happy, you know, to see this progress. And uh, this happiness uh, is like really good. It's boosting up my energy levels more. So that's where I am right now. You know, I'm, I'm really excited and uh, it's pushing me forward. Very, very well uh, deserved, uh, Pavi, as uh, you know, uh, you should feel, right? You should feel really proud of yourself and really appreciate uh, all those nice things you said about your coaching experience too. I mean, frankly, it takes two to tango, Pavi. It's like when you move, I move. When I move, you should move, right? So that's how it should be. So I really appreciate your dedication and commitment towards uh, this journey as well. Actually, that's really true. You know, uh, eight months back when I started, I had really... Uh... Uh, you know, doubts about myself, like uh, whether I could do it because I had a six month old son and a four year old daughter, whether I can handle this, you know, like uh, this journey, will it really work for me? You know, actually, when I was getting into this program, I didn't know much. But when you explained it, and uh, after that, also, I had a little bit doubts, you know, whether I can do that, you know, you'll have that doubts when you start get started and uh, okay you know sometimes you'll feel like giving up certain situation i feel like giving up you know but this program as you said like i don't know where i found that in myself you know probably that's why uh, you are a great coach i would say because that's why you covered even the mental health section for me so probably that helped me resolve a few things which made me push myself further that's how i see it you know so Thank you so much for that. You know, so I, I, I you really, uh, I, I didn't know that I can do this. You know, I, I wow. really didn't know I can push myself this further. And uh, right now I'm consistent. Okay, so that is where I am. I'm really proud of myself. Even my husband is like, uh, every day I get up, I have to work out. So, you know, even the second I feel like I'm lazy, I push myself. That's how I am right now. Morning, wow. I had something unplanned coming up today, you know. And I thought, okay, I cannot, that's it. My workout cannot be done today. Afternoon, I have a, I have a, I have a meeting. So I, I don't think I can do this. And okay, then I push myself, even if it's half an hour, let me do it. I know I planned for one and a half hours, but okay, now I have half an hour. Let me move myself and finish how much ever I could. And I did that half an hour of workout. So that's where I am. Even though a lot of unplanned stuff pop out, I, I try mm. to uh, find some little bit of time, even if 20 minutes, 30 minutes, so it's like, uh, I, I don't like go for, okay, oh, I plan for one hour. I can't do it right now. I give up. It's, I'm not in that give up position now. I like, okay, I have 30 minutes. I have 20 minutes. Even I have 15 minutes. Let me do something. Let me move. That's how I am right now. Wow. That's amazing, amazing insights there, Pavi. Um, the way in which you, your self-doubt started giving way to self-belief, right? Uh, by prioritizing your tasks and actually shrinking it to a point where you are, a, you feel confident to get it done, right? We never went after huge goals, right? We, have, we yes. did have our vision on your final outcome, but the tasks themselves were very, very tiny and simple enough for you to get them done daily. And, and this is amazing where you're also able to adapt, right? When something 
comes up there is a road block how do you pivot and still make sure you are staying consistent so immediately yes. you got the idea to shrink the task and just get done with it right a uh, brilliant effort there pavi so quickly before we move on to the call if you can just share a few words about yourself and your family and give an introduction to the audience about uh, where you stand uh, where you actually uh, where when you before you started working with me okay so uh, hi everyone this is for all your clients <laughs> my name is pavitra so uh, i have two kids two lovely kids you know a uh, one year old son and a four year old daughter and uh, i used to work like couple of years back and when i had my second baby it was a cautious decision that i should quit and then focus of my focus on my baby at least till one one and a half years and then get back to work so the same happened for my uh, first uh, daughter so i uh, quit work and spent some time with my daughter till she was one year old and then i went back to work so that's how i planned as well you know for my second when i had planned for a second pregnancy and everything so uh, when i think i was pregnant like uh, it was uh, i think the pandemic and everything started and uh, she was at home and i had a lot of uh, issues with my pregnancy and uh, like i had a surgery in my 6 month of pregnancy with the risk of the baby coming out prematurely survival chances were less so too much of like uh, constantly i was going into kind of like a very uh, depression you know whether i can handle this pregnancy and how strong i will be but i fought that and i did you know deliver my son safely you know but during that 9 months of pregnancy my entire thinking was i should work out you know walk do some le- some level of activity should be there that's what i was focusing for my second pregnancy but unfortunately it went uh, topsy turvy you know like with i had to be at bed rest the entire 9 months and uh, here like i was like forced fed lot of foods you know you have to eat it you have to eat that and everything so i i gained lot of weight and uh, one point uh, after delivery uh, i think two after two months after delivery i was not even able to move you know like i felt like not even moving few steps you know so i was so mm. depressed i felt like there was no energy at all in me all i could do is constantly like there were like uh, you know like you have to feed your baby you have to eat more and mm. uh, you are expected this you are expected to that you you're not supposed to come here you're not supposed to work out so there were so many restrictions in our i think in the indian culture right so i don't know but i know it's not true but still you know i cannot i cannot come out of it with so many people like pushing me behind you know and thought wise like no you cannot do this you should not do this so that made me move into a depression phase for a couple of months you know for so no reason i would like start crying and everything and they they said like oh uh, we all went through this uh, why are you depressed it's nothing you know so there was no help from anyone i struggled myself and i just came out of it somehow and i started seeing your video somewhere around fourth or fifth month uh, after my son was born and uh, and they were really motivating for me you know so i i i was initially hesitating because i was like six months postpartum right so whether i could handle this program that was one question in my mind but then again i challenged myself if i think a lot of people right like uh, who are delivering babies i could see them moving around like uh, working out with their babies and the size if they can do it maybe i should try that why why am i questioning myself maybe i do have that in myself to do it so that's how i push myself and uh, i found you you know i think it's the blessing in disguise that's what i would say so it's and it ended up well right now you know so that's how i am and uh, and currently i think my family right my even my little one my daughter like uh, so uh, she's like uh, an example i would say is like i gave her chips yesterday she told no it's not it's not healthy mommy we should not eat it wow. and she didn't even allow my in-laws to eat it so that's the current situation <laughs> in my family wow look at that i mean you you know been a, an amazing uh, influence on your family and uh, thank you so much for sharing a little bit of a background about uh, where you were before you joined the program and right there is an amazing story of how you stepped out of your comfort zone and questioned your own self doubts right you were very hesitant to join the program how do, how would this work for me uh, you know usual uh, doubts that everybody has and then you actually went beyond that to make this for yourself 
what what was the turning point that told you that hey you know what i should give this a try what what actually went on uh i think around the fifth or sixth month right uh the same people who said i should eat a lot and feed my kid right they started ridiculing me like you know what what is this you look fat you look like this you know i have been body shamed a lot okay oh, oh. and uh, and i i felt bad you know because i was not able to do at anything at that point i just kept quiet it's they they didn't nobody consoled me saying it's okay it's post pregnancy this is how you will be and nobody consoled me saying that it will eventually go away i didn't have nobody told me like that you know so i was mm. like feeling a little bit down and i said okay maybe i think uh, uh, nobody is going to tell us it's it's up to me you know to stand up and do something for myself i can't have like someone coming and telling me you have to do this you have to do this you are in a world where you have to stand up for yourself you know so mm. that's how i pushed myself so mm. i and uh, it's it's just not about the uh, body shaming you know it's like i had my test taken i think my uh, uh i had my annual checkup done and uh, and i saw my cholesterol were like a little bit high off and and everything so i felt like okay you know i i should start this program with uh, with dear right now i'll get to i'll get into it no matter what and i have to understand about myself this six mm. months maybe you know i i wanted to know about myself whether i could mm. push myself what my capabilities are and understand more my more of myself whether i could restrict myself whether uh, you know like so i i it really worked out good for me i am that person yesterday also you know i was uh, i was handling a family situation on my mom's side and i was like i was totally falling back i was telling my husband i think i want to have a dog so like cookie from this place and she, he was like uh, oh hey, what uh, you know i'm feeling so down but i didn't do that <laughs> then after a couple of seconds i stopped area i was like okay let me think do i really need this dog chocolate <laughs> right now <laughs> so okay no no let, okay let me have a uh, when a uh, coffee a cup of uh, like black coffee and i'm done you know with a little bit of sugar and i was like okay i stopped it i didn't i didn't go ahead and buy that so <laughs> that's how i uh, am right now early so god god was, my past couple of i mean i mean for past 10 to 12 years i would say i would like if i am really stressed i would really binge eat like anything i even finished a pack of chocolate so that's how i am okay so yesterday i am really i was really proud of myself so that's i think that's the point where like when i felt like nobody is going to tell me i have to do it and mm. uh, that six months my husband said whether you can handle that six months with the baby you know in between i think you know that i didn't have any help from my family or my husband's family and uh, there were some domestic health issues as well but uh, uh, i really and then in between i went to my home native for a month where i was pushed into fasting for a couple of days for ritual reasons and a lot of things did happen but the, mm. but it, even though i didn't uh, work out right i really uh, the portion control and everything helped me so i realized that even though it's 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 like mentally you have to you know it's even though it's not the work out i always thought like you have to lose weight only you have to work out okay mm. and you have to eat like this uh, no junk and uh, only uh, like a grilled chicken and veggies that's it that's what i was thinking okay so this is how you so i i didn't know okay oh you can still drink when you said you can drink coffee i was like what what is she saying is she saying like we can drink coffee <laughs> so and i still and to all uh, with the client i still drink my two cup of coffee every day okay although i lost uh, like uh, around the 10 kg right so i still i still drink two cups of coffee every day i'm just letting you know it's just not like related to like you for you need to go for diet food or uh, or you have to exercise like to rigorously like for two hours a day to lose your weight so that's what actually that's it that's like it's an eye opener for me thank you so much uh, pavi you know for really motivating everybody uh, and inspiring with your journey it's it's amazing actually to see uh, the kind of progress that you're seeing now right um close to 10 kilos of loss you are fitting into uh, smaller clothes so much inch loss and most importantly in terms of healing your relationship with food right the kind of perspective that you came with into the program and how everything was so different you did not have to give up on your favorite foods you did not have to do rigorous exercise you That's still true. had your yeah you still allowed yourself to have and then this amazing incident even yesterday that you shared about that you were craving for a, a dark chocolate cookie 
um, but you paused and actually understood the need behind it and actually chose to go for something else right again there that one episode is enough to say that how empowered you felt to make the choices for yourself that worked for you right uh, and again getting away from stress eating emotional eating binge eating all of these mm-hmm. are amazing amazing uh, uh, progress indicators right uh, pavi um, so i remember uh, this one time that when you joined right uh, i'm so sorry you had to go through body image issues and those same people like a couple of your cousins were going through some diets and they wanted you to follow also right tell me what made you kind of move away from that and choose a sustainable one uh i can tell you an example that happened like uh, maybe uh, three years back when i was like a uh, uh, postpartum six months or eight months after my first baby was born like my elder one so i actually uh, i went to a trainer you know my 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 brother is uh, my brother referred him uh, bigly morley so he gave me he gave me a diet chart okay where like there was this detox uh, or whatever fasting i had to do and uh, i think there was this fruit fasting and when i and there are days i had to eat only veggies okay the, those are the those days i i remember myself like very weak you know i didn't have any energy at all in my body and i was not able to take care of my daughter and moreover like it was like uh, it was like every minute was like seconds for, it was like seconds you know it was going on very slowly for me the time was moving very slow so i i didn't want to go through that again okay so i realized at the time itself like i should not like go into fasting fasting is not for me it is not mm. ideal for me uh, so i decided that at that time and then uh, uh, yes there were a lot of suggestions from my cousins till date that i should do this uh, 24 hour fasting or 48 hour fasting uh, the thing is uh, i don't know how i heard like uh, they they got this idea from their friend they were doing it maybe they had someone helping them also they just got that and they do did that and uh, but i i never uh, i am not i'm not a person who can go for that, uh, fasting you know uh, except like three months back i had to go for a forced ritual fasting mm-hmm. that was because in my in law side there's something i had to do and and that time also my husband helped me with the kids and uh, they were all okay okay they helped me with everything but it is something religious purpose and it was one time only i did that okay other than that even though i think couple of weeks back when i talked to my cousin when they told me you can do it it's like uh, uh, when you're stuck like uh, when at one weight it will help you reset it and you can push yourself forward i said uh, no it's not for me right uh, because uh, now i have two kids okay so this argument also came with my cousin uh, mm. maybe two days back so i said like fasting is not for me like uh, uh, i have kids and i need some level of energy some level of food you know to keep me moving mm. i don't mm. mind taking some time to lose my weight that's okay for me uh, she told me like oh don't give excuses just because you have two kids like uh, you cannot fast do a 24 or 48 hours i said it's again uh, i'm not saying like work out even if you have kids no kids whatever you you can do the workout you can find some time for yourself to do it but mm. it's not the same for fasting not everybody is same i mm. have two kids they are my priority okay mm. so i need to have the energy only when i eat proper breakfast and a nutritious food the entire day and mm. also do my workout i can take care of themselves okay so i cannot i know the effects of fasting maybe right now they're all like just married they don't have kids they think it's it's okay okay it might be okay for them but it's not but lay, i i just did tell them i'm not talking for from the workout perspective it's just for fasting and this is not an excuse this is a decision from me that i'll not do fasting because it will not work out for me and i would rather be consistent in my practices and lose the weight uh, over the years rather than like uh, doing it in one thing couple of days and losing that weight all for you know you're going to get get it back Mm. you're going to get it back i've seen that happen when i when begli murli gave me that diet right like where i had to do detox and the not eat this and that for the 24 hour 48 hours so i went through that i just put that back put back that weight it will mm. happen eventually you are you when you get pregnant you'll have hormonal changes and everything so rather you can go through a consistent eating habit consistent workout that you can do for yourself every day you know that's how you should do it so 
fasting is not for me i'm not sure i'm sorry it's not to offend the people who are doing the fasting but uh, yeah so uh, thank you uh, pavi so one of the reasons you joined the program was also to understand insights about yourself and learn a lot of awareness right like what works for you and what doesn't work for you so coming into the program you you already had the awareness that fasting is not for you i mean look at the way you're talking uh, today pavi with so much conviction and confidence um, learning so much about yourself and understanding what works and what doesn't work right so for you it was all about making sure uh, you are able to stay consistent with your habits multiplying that by time and seeing progress however long it takes you are willing to be patient with the progress but not willing to starve or put yourself through torture to make this happen right uh, pavi yes yes with there to add to that point right when i started this program i do i did i do know that i had two kids you know so uh, when i was uh, postpartum with my i mean uh, with my first daughter right it was i think around 8 months i started my fitness journey at that time i did lo- uh, lost a, i lost a lot of weight because i just one kid and my mom was there to help at the time okay so it wasn't the same case here so mm. i i i know i can't like lose a 20 kg i did within 6 uh, 6 or 28 months again i cannot this it cannot be the same okay mm-hmm. so when the when it's the different phase of your life you'll have different things coming up okay so according according to that situation you have to set your goal so i mm. was not greedy my initial i think i told you be, before my trans birthday i should be somewhere by 69 but i still didn't regret it anyways i didn't come to 60 60s at that point but still now i'm 69 but uh, but that's okay i i'm able to i'm still happy about it and i i didn't feel that oh no i set a goal that i should be in my 60s before december so i didn't do it i wasn't because i know there were a lot of things coming in up uh, prioritizing you know as you said there's going to be a lot of unplanned things coming up and i have to handle mm. those situation and adapt accordingly so this mm. is going to be for the next uh, you know with kids and everything it's this is how life is going to happen so rather i could do the best that i could for this day and then see how the next day works so that's how uh, i set my goal you know is not to lose drastically 20 kg in like 6 months or 8 months of the program my goal was to lose it consistently and get into that habit of mm. consistency so i can i'm still want to reduce my weight but i will do it. i'll take year or two or the rest of the life to maintain it as well and be consistent so and i still, and i can vision that i don't want to put on that weight as well rather i will do the workout for the day and be consistent you know with my habits and then also enjoying my food you know it doesn't mean you have to sacrifice all you know uh i i my brother bigly i think he said if you want to maintain your weight you should eat healthy food not have sweets and everything i i now i could say that no it, it is not the same okay it's not maybe that's your view but my view is i could still enjoy the food i love and maintain my weight and maintain the consistency and the practices throughout my life very very powerful insights here uh, for all the ladies who are watching definitely the number one insight uh, or nugget that you have shared for me is to prioritize your uh, needs right uh, even if you have young kids you absolutely can prioritize your needs and make this happen if uh, you know if you are able to make it happen you are going to actually be a better mom right when you do this for yourself second important nugget you have shared here pavi is to set reasonable goals understanding what works for you understanding your capabilities and make sure you are setting reasonable goals that you are able to go after and feel accomplished from doing it also not like some dream that you are constantly chasing and you feel miserable not making it happen right uh, very very nice uh, pavi thank you so much for those two nuggets i'm sure we are going to capture a lot more uh, uh, nuggets that you're going to share so uh, let's see i mean what did you originally want to see as progress when you joined the program and how did your ideas change now originally i wanted to see that i could the energy levels were very low you know so i know uh, when i started like it's going to be my i cannot be like immediately i cannot run and uh, you know uh, run in the treadmill and i can and my energy levels will be high immediately so so what i uh, when i started i i set a goal okay let me start with 20 minutes of walking you know at this speed slowly every two days i started increasing a little by little 
push myself so at one point i was able to that took around two months or two two months for me to do 45 minutes at the speed of six you know mm. so i didn't push myself immediately to start with the high speed because it takes time for my body to accept it especially uh uh, after uh, six months of the delivery and the postpartum depression and uh, yeah, the COVID situation and everything, I thought, okay, I will do it at the speed like where uh, I will slowly take the progress to the next level and increase it whenever it is required because I don't want to push myself for, I mean, to an extreme mm. where I would like quit as well. Mm-hmm. So mm. I understood my body situation and the time I had and what I could do. And uh, I, I did whatever the bo- my body would accept at that time. So that's mm. how I did that. So initially, the uh, plan was to increase my energy level. You know, I know the initial there will be some weight loss. I was not focused about the weight loss at all. It's all about the energy level. And I think after two months or something, I could feel the change in the energy levels, you know. So I was more active than before. I was able to move around more a lot. and. Uh, so that's how uh, I could see the changes. You know, uh, I, earlier I was not able to lift anything or I would not be able to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, walk for a long time outside if I go out or uh, mm-hmm. play with my kids. So I could notice the differences over these, you know, these uh, situations. Yeah. So again, a uh, very, very important nugget here that you've shared is prioritizing consistency over intensity. Yes. You absolutely pushed back and said, hey, Sri Vidya, this is what the situation is the next couple of weeks. I may not be able to, you were not shy in sharing with me, Pavi, that, hey, you know what, I, wa- I just want to stay consistent. I don't want to go after a bigger goal right now, given this is what is going to happen, anticipating roadblocks in the next couple of weeks, let me just stay consistent. And that is why your progress is so remarkable, uh, Pavi. You stuck on with the practices right from day one and never once gave up right? Even if, if it meant showing up imperfectly and shrinking the task to the very, very small version. Sometimes I remember even you were able to get done like maybe even 15, 20 minutes of your walk-in. Yes. It may not have been a big goal, but some version of that practice, you kept it happening. Hats off. Uh, Thank Abhi. you. With yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that this treadmill was not here like the first two months of my <laughs> the program, you know, so I used to go to the terrace and walk. And that is early in the morning, around 5.45 or 6. And I try to walk out to a walk one hour in the terrace. And uh, I, I didn't want to go out and walk in the morning. I mean, uh, uh, like, uh, it's like, it's a very small, small place. I mean, you will, it's not like, a, you can't do a straight walking here, you know. So there are a lot of bumps and everything. So I thought, okay, I'll do it in the terrace. So I did it in the terrace for two months and then it became very hot <laughs> and then the weather changed and I thought, okay, and uh, thank God my father gave his treadmill for, because they were not using it, my parents, so, and I got the treadmill and we started walking. So thanks to that. And now I found out a lot of workouts that I could do even without treadmill and I'm enjoying that actually. Because probably I think four months I've been walking a lot and running, I started running and I felt a little bit bored. Mm. you know the same doing the same thing again and again so now mm. i push myself to arabic workouts and oh my god those are like my entire body becomes sore i have to do at least like uh, five to ten minutes of stretching to like even walk you know all my wow. entire upper body and everything will be but actually you know it, it probably uh, i i like to do zumba earlier you know and some mm. kind of dance so i used to dance also a little bit in between after my arabic is done like i'll put five to ten minutes of some song videos my daughter joins me as well so we do dance and then you know it's fun so make it like more fun and it, it really like even the arabic workouts right it's not easy sometimes you know they do a lot of uh, workouts you know all different variations yeah. and uh, so yeah, they uh, i think around 30 minutes i'll feel a little tired but uh, with the music and everything i push myself Probably so that I think even anyone who workouts will listen to music and workouts. So so I did push myself and I did that one hour workouts and one and a half hour workouts. And easily I I take the 10,000 steps in that even, you mm. know. So that comes up to 10,000 steps, one and one and a half hour Arabic workout. So I finish off my workout like that. And at the same time, I'm having fun. And uh, that's really good. And I found that doing a more uh, Arabic workout, I, I could feel more energy energy in me, you know. So uh, more than uh, walking, 
walking is like now it's gone into days when uh, I'm not feeling good. I'll do some kind of like minimal. So I'm using the treadmill for that. But most okay. of the days it's like aerobic workouts or hit. I've started with hits. It's a couple of days back, you know, but not too heavy, like like beginner level right now. But uh, yeah, because I want to make sure I get all the forms and everything before starting doing, start to doing it properly. So okay. I think even the variation of exercise over the period, right, has, has changed for me. I started with the workout in the, I mean, the terrace, and then it moved to a treadmill. Now I'm doing like uh, weights as well as like uh, Arabic weights. I do 10 minutes, 10 minutes, not mm. much, but mm. that is what I could do. I think I clearly told you, right? One, one and a half hours in that I could do only 10, 15 minutes of weights. So I got some weights and doing all different variations so that I'm not stuck into like the same uh, monotonously. Like I'm not doing the same thing again and again. So I'm trying different variations. And I, I don't push myself like to do another one and a half hours workout in the evening. I finish myself to one and a half hours workout in the morning because I have other priorities, my kids and everything. So I finish and I, I don't want to do like, oh, okay, let me do half an hour more weights. I don't do that. I'm fine mm. with what I am right now. But when I really do have the time to do another 15, 20 minutes in the future, I will definitely accommodate it. But mm. right now, this is the best I could do and I'm going to do it consistently. Amazing progress there, Pavi. And uh, the way you're also, uh, we started with just showing up for your walk and right after your meditation and then your yes. little bit of planks and probably squats or something like that. And today, look how your consistency has, where your consistency has taken you, uh, Pavi. You started with a little bit of walk, then you shaped your environment by bringing the treadmills from your dad's place, which allowed you to show up even more consistently, right? Given the asthma and all those allergies and everything yes, in, you yes, had a lot medical, of difficulties yeah. stepping out right so again bringing it in made it uh, happen even more consistently and then it has given you the confidence because you started to feel better you started the inches dropping right uh, it gave you a little bit more confidence to actually scale this up to include uh, strength training as well huge progress there i want to quickly talk about uh, the first five minute action we picked which is your meditation uh, pavi so can you share with me how it has helped you with your emotional regulation and the notice and name practice as well, both of these practices? So the first the meditation is like, uh, I think that's the first thing we started, right? Five minutes of meditation. But uh, frankly speaking, I'm just doing two to three minutes right now, which changed a lot. Uh, so anyways, but the five, meditation is still going on on a daily basis. So it, it's like a time for myself, you know, I don't think about anything. It's just like something peaceful. I don't think about you know, like, oh no. When some people in meditation will think what to do for the day, I don't do that because I want it to be peaceful without sound. Sometime like my daughter will be sleeping so I can do that like three minutes in the room and uh, not think about anything, you know, that, that gives me like, uh, you know, the planning for the day that helps me with the planning for the day. You know, mm. it clears my mind. You know, so it, uh, after that, I will start thinking what I should do for the day, what is there for the day. I will write it down in the board and everything. So, and it keeps me in track, you know, of, for that mental check of the day. You know, the meditation helps a lot. Uh, handling things patiently. Don't lose my temper. You know, I used to lose my temper a lot. You know, so I used to calm down. With the meditation, actually, I never thought I could do it consistently at all. Mm. I have never done meditation on or yoga or anything of that sort like uh, in the past years. So there's something like uh, it's good and I would like to keep, even if it's two minutes or five minutes, I would like to keep it in my practice every day consistently throughout the years to come. So it gives me a clear clarity after once mm. I meditate. I, I don't think about anything at the time, just uh, uh, maybe something where I, I feel like I'm sitting in a beach or sitting in a, Mount top of a mountain and I'm just enjoying the weather you know so that's how that meditation will happen for me till date because that that, that calms me down a little so it calms me down that's what it mm -hmm. is so because meditation you, myself yeah it, before meditation you know go morning I wake up oh no I have to do this oh no I have to do that and it, I'll scramble on and uh, then in, and put in another set of work in between whatever I planned and it will be like out of control, you know. So that's how it was. And after meditation, I think it helped with helped me with the. I mean, it it. I think that's how I think the mental health also works in meditation and that mental health, you know. So whenever I take, whenever I pause, I close my eyes. I I think you know, I I don't. 
you know, calm myself first and then only I think, okay, I should not react like this for the situation. So I think it all goes hand in hand together. That's what I feel. Mm. So again, um, it's it's not easy at all, Pavi, having very, very small kids, right, to show up for this, to even find the two minutes in a day to sit down calmly and yeah. focus on focus on your breath or have pleasant thoughts, but you made it happen, Pavi. Again, Recently, my daughter is getting up whenever I'm getting up. So when I'm doing meditation, she's like, mommy, mommy, wake up. The sun has come. We have to get up. Let's go. This is how this is how my meditation is happening. I like telling her, wait, wait, just wait for two more minutes. Just give me two more minutes. So again, the, the misconception about the meditation is you have to show up perfectly. There has to be zero thoughts, right? You have to be like the saint. It's it's impossible to do that, especially yes. uh, you know when we are caught in so many uh, family responsibilities and duties. It's it's not it's not at all possible to sit like that. But the the point here you are trying to make is. You are focusing on your mental health. You're doing this, uh, for, you know, for the, for the mental health and sitting down and thinking pleasant thoughts, right? Like visualization, sitting like, you know, on a beach and enjoying the breeze and the, the sound of waves or whatever, ha- thinking pleasant thoughts, that's helping you actually get through those two to three minutes. Uh, yes. And you're noticing you, you come away with a lot of clarity and it helps uh, regulate your emotions. You've become much calmer. You're able to pause and think and you know before you react you're able to do that right can you also tell me the add-on practice that we had which is notice the name how did that help you actually I know you had some really challenging situations at home right so how did that help you come out of that uh, yes like uh, yeah a lot of family issues you know I had uh, I think once I started this program there was a breakout for me you know where uh, I didn't have help from either side of the family you know they Mm -hmm. said they they cannot help us like and it was like an eight month old baby so in between the program right i felt i i felt in, i felt that i could not do this how will i do this you know how will i find time for myself to work out how will i time for, for myself to uh, like uh, meditation or cook for myself you know so it's it was it was like you know i was a little bit uh, upset you know and uh, my although my husband did help me and I, I broke down I started being emotional and everything and I think we even had a we had a chat and you said that's okay and uh, so uh, and I think after a couple of days uh, I, I, I was like okay I accept it so this is how it's gonna be so mm. I had to again think like what I should do change my mm. schedule now so mm. that is what actually uh, something I learned from that episode you know that happened to I think second month of this program I believe then I even at that moment I thought I'll give up okay but uh, and then you when we had the talk that was really good it, you had really helped me out during the time after that like any kind of uh, episodes like that happened right like uh, anything like family dramas or something like the domestic help or something I am able I'm, I'm, I'm able to pause myself notice what is happening and then okay I should not react immediately. Okay, so let me think what is the, if I, if I react in a very bad way, it's going to impact myself, my mental health. So that's why I calm myself for two minutes and I think, okay, how to handle this situation? And uh, then I do it slowly. Then it, it, it made me feel better. At the mm. end of the day, uh, I don't, I, I, I feel happy, okay, with what? I feel accepted, okay, this is how it is. This is the solution and I we should uh, handle it calm and then... Uh, so it fell in place, you know, it fell in place in such a way that at the end of the day, I was the one who was getting stressed out and uh, I was into like, a, I don't know, like I feel, I used to feel bad, you know, I, I used to feel terrible. I don't have those feelings anymore. Mm. I feel better. I feel positive. I could, I felt like I could handle the situation, whatever situation. So those emotions were che- were kept on, were, were checked at the time, you know, so I was like, mm. okay, so it made me happy. You know, that's what I need. If I'm happy, everything, everything around will be happy. Everyone around will be made, will be happy. So that's how I change how, that's how I change myself. Amazing nugget there again, uh, Pavi. When, when we are happy, everything around us will also yes. be, uh, you know, good. I mean, it will turn out really good. Everyone will be happy as well. So again, you prioritize your mental health. Uh, I remember the initial few months were really, really turbulent times for you, Pavi, as you were trying to adapt and, focus on yourself get things done it was really rocky it was a rocky start 
right? And uh, it's amazing how you applied the skill of notice and name and consistently practiced it, right? Uh, whenever any such uh, uh, troubling episodes came up, you paused, you kind of understood what was going on, focused on what is under your control, rose up uh, above that situation and took, took things under your control. And with a proactive mindset, you were able to think, think through the yes. problem and figure out a solution that would work for you. Um, amazing work there, uh, Pavi. Thank you so much. Uh, now I want to ask you about um, how this mindfulness and self-awareness is helping you with your eating habits. So, uh, can I just get a quick one minute break for water? Yeah, yeah, please, please, please. So uh, I I am a good eater. You know, I love food. I'm a foodie. I, that's really like, I love to eat everything. I try everything, you know. So I don't have any restrictions. Even I, uh, my husband and my in-laws, they don't eat beef and all. Even my parents, they don't eat, except my father. But I still have beef as well. <laughs> so I, I tried dark beef, venison, like the deer meat and everything. So I'm, I'm a good foodie. You know, I do Italian, I Chinese, Thai, anything. Yeah, I mean, continent, everything. I will try everything. And uh, so... Being a foodie, right, it's difficult when it comes to when there's good food, okay, either it's biryani or whatever it is, right, my favorite sambar, uh, rice and everything. So I, I go for like, I eat a lot, you know, I eat a lot. So that's what it is. I'll be really tempted, like if someone is like offering me pasta, I will not just a small bowl, I'll have a huge bowl of pasta. That's what I am. Okay, so that's how I love food. And, uh, and and, and I found it difficult when my when I was training for uh, I think three four years back to lose weight. It was difficult for me to just uh, all of a sudden not eat all those. You know, I was into six months of training with like just uh, workouts and not eating rice or the sambar, my favorite, or the pasta or uh, uh, biryani. You know, it's like all I've been told is it's too many calories if you eat it. That's it. Whatever you mm. worked out will be done. That's it. Mm. You'll not lose weight at all. So that's what I did lose weight. But I think I fell back into the practice after three, six months of training or six to one year, six months, one year of training I lost around 20 kg actually. Then mm. I, I, then after that, I think I started getting back to my old practice of eating food because I really love food. Mm. I was not able to control myself, you know. So I, I, first I had a little bit of portion, small portion, and then it increased, increased, increased. So the quantity I was eating, like, I think it's, it was more, even though my, I felt full, I still had more because you'll, you'll feel like, oh, so happy you're having it more and more. And you, you, you don't, your body knows it's full, but still mm. you feel, you'll feel like eating more. So that's what I am. And I love chocolates. Okay. So, so I did not need to go to that section at all, <laughs> chocolates and cakes. <clears throat> So I'm basically a foodie. So uh, I like to try different foods as well. So uh, uh, I, it's very hard for me to go into any specific diet. So, but mm. when, when I think I, I talked with you, right. And I, not before even that uh, discussion came about the, uh, uh, eat, I mean, uh, the portion control and everything. I think I saw a couple of videos sometime in March last year uh, about that portion control and your client uh, play, meals, meal plates. So that inspired me. So what I thought was like, uh, let me eat, but let me uh, reduce the portion of what I'm eating. So before even uh, uh, we had the discussion during the program, I started it from March or April itself. I cautiously, I switched my uh, 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 rice, white, I mean, white rice to brown rice. And I controlled my portion, like sambar, I had a little bit, veggies, I had a little bit, biryani also, I had a little bit. So th that's how I started taking... I may, taking it a little bit less than what I usually do. So after I saw your videos, food wise, that is when I saw, although I didn't do any workouts at the time, but uh, seeing your uh, meal plates and client meal plates and uh, uh, the portion that people were eating, I think somewhat I gave me the idea. That's how I think I'm supposed to eat. Nobody told me that this is how I should be eating. So uh, I followed my own way. Like I can, I reduced it. And then I think uh, two months or three months, two months after the program, the, uh, we got into that uh, talk of like uh, uh, the portion control, follow your hunger cues and how you should eat. So that's when I, I you taught me like, uh, like what I should have more, what I should eat less, but I could still have my biryani, you know, 
you mm. can still have your vada you can still have your rasgulla my favorite so i can i so it's all about like uh, eating how much you want and not like uh, like uh, the entire bar of chocolate or thin rasgullas or like uh, this much of uh, biryani so that's what i realized so i still uh, uh, i remember that discussion you know how you very well told me like uh, the portion control what is nutritious food that we should eat more what we should eat less you didn't ask me to stop eating rice at all so uh, you said we should have uh, more protein more veggies you know and also yogurt topic came and we had so that was all covered there so it's uh, about the nutritious food i had same time there were uh, maybe once in a week i do have biryani but the portion will be less you know i eat i take more chicken in the biryani than the rice mm. so and i eat <clears throat> and with the yogurt and eggs so that's how but i still enjoyed it <clears throat> i realized that if i give up something you know like all of a sudden stop and eat only grilled chicken veggies egg whites i i end up eating more later so i don't want to deprive my body i am i'm just telling my body it's okay to eat but you can eat a little you know mm-hmm. and i'm happy about it it's like i'm not at the after eating biryani uh, i am not like uh, worried that i, sh- I uh, that i should have eaten more you know i feel po- perfectly good i full you know uh, i you know even after eating i'll have veggies as well you know but like my somebody told me what are you eating veggies after having biryani you know Uh, i felt little hungry i didn't want to have biryani so i'm having veggies i'm happy that i had biryani because i i ate that and i love the flavor i enjoyed it for 5 10 minutes and that's it that's how that's where i am right now so this mm. portion control and following my hunger cues eating slowly so you know that uh, that was like good before i think even even before talking about us, uh, eating slowly like uh, we had a challenge in the whatsapp group <clears throat> and people and the ladies were all timing it out that was like really impressive you know so i was like i hats off to all those ladies who did that but uh, i think i was in my hometown at the time my in laws hometown and uh, i thought okay i cannot do 20 minutes but let me at least try 5 10 10 minutes you know that's how i kept kept the timing and i it ate for 10 minutes you know so <clears throat> started with that and now i can i'm eating for 15 minutes i am not able to go to 20 minutes but i'm eating 15 minutes okay so that is how this uh, the how, this, this is how where this i mean right now my food habits right it changed drastically i had rasgulla like uh, yes day before yesterday on sunday as well right. i had one you know i had one my husband said you want to have one we went out you know for a quick snack and yeah i had rasgulla i had it and uh, and uh, i i didn't go for a second one actually i told him let's go for a second one but then i said no i don't want a second one i'm good you know so and uh, because i didn't really feel like having a second one uh, so i i but he all he was like whatever you want you can order that's what he will say but uh, i just gave i just left it you know nowadays is like i i try to if i want i i'll say i want some more but then i said like i don't need this you know that's how that's where i am so immediately my mind goes falls back to the decision like no no i don't i don't feel it i don't feel like having it like yesterday i had mm. a dark chocolate cookie episode I didn't mm. need it actually, so that's how I actually am appreciating myself because being a foodie, you know, it's not easy to make the decision. You know, yeah, okay, it's just what it's going to take a second for me to put it, put the order in Swiggy or some auto and have it delivered here. No, I didn't want to do that. You know, so obviously, I I used to eat or uh, order a lot in Swiggy and some auto that that reduced drastically. I'm cooking my own meals, like I'm prepping myself better for you no. Know, i'm prepping my food you know cutting the veggies and uh, i have the broccoli chicken mushroom stir fry i ha- i add it to my uh, i add it to every day almost there will be chicken broccoli i'll have yogurt i'll have more veggies you know whatever veggies they cooking for uh, for the regular every for the entire family i'll have that as well so that's how my food habits have changed you know and wow. i still have my idli sambar i still have uh, my sambar rice you know i still have my biryani i still have my rasgulla i still have my piece of chocolate and uh, okay. yes and i i think uh, if, what i started the program on june and uh, i think uh, somewhere around march my weight was like 80 point something that's when i started seeing your videos 80 point when i started the program it was 77 point somewhere I'm close to 78 so now i'm 69 point something so i think even with eating all this and with the one month of break in your program one and a half months i think to two months i there was a break in your program 
I'm still able to achieve this goal, you know. Mm. So it's not, uh, I want people to realize it's just not the workout and you have to be in diet all the time to uh, achieve your goal. You can still mm. have a little bit of what you like and still you can lose your weight, you know. Be smart about your choices and also give yourself, uh, I mean, uh, it's okay once in a while, right? You can have a little bit of what you like and that's that's still you can lose your weight. Wow. Lots of hugs to you, Pavi. Thank you so much for sharing this uh, mm-hmm. with the audience that uh, it's not necessary to give up on your favorite foods and yes. uh, exercise like crazy to go after your goals. Uh, what you need is smart choices. Uh, thank you, for, Pavi, for sharing that. Uh, every time choosing something that works for you and uh, rising above the, uh, the occasion and feeling empowered to do this for yourself. So many situations that Pavi shared where she uh, chose differently, even when she had that thought, discerning between want and need. Is, is this a want of mine or is this a need? And what do I want for myself now? You know, do I want to satisfy my need or my want, right? Understanding that and also uh, meal plating skills seems to have helped her a lot. Uh, Apart from meal planning and prepping skills, uh, Pavi is an amazing planner and uh, with great organizational skills. So that's really coming uh, in handy uh, while planning her meals. And the other thing is um, definitely uh, eating slowly uh, and mindfully. That's uh, helped her a lot, uh, especially when she was away in her village, uh, she could not actually work out or move about. This was one practice that actually helped her stay on track and still see progress when she came back. Yes, she did hours, gain, she didn't gain I, back the weight. No, right? no, no. Well, I lost actually uh, uh, one and a half kg. I didn't have time uh, for workouts. I had to eat the regular food. I, I ate the regular food. I didn't have time for workouts. I just avoided sweets and... Uh, I had my, I, I just had portion control. I worked on portion mm. control. I ate more mm. veggies and more mm. protein. And although I didn't have time for workouts, I was busy taking care of the kids because there's no help of absolutely in my village, you know. Mm. Uh, it, so it was more of a backward backward uh, place, you know, in the village where you have to do. And uh, But somehow, actually, even I was surprised when I saw the progress after coming back. I, I think I was telling yeah. you, I thought I would have gained weight, but uh, looks like I've lost weight. But yeah, so, yeah. it doesn't nice. matter. Even if you are out somewhere in a different place, a different uh, city or country, you know, and you feel like, okay, I know home is where you're comfortable. You do your workouts, you prep and everything. Again, if you go to a different place or someone's house, it's your choices that you make. Okay, mm. what you eat. Okay, there might be variety of uh, food items there. I I am I made smart choice of eating more veggies, you know, more of chicken or protein, less of rice. I I don't deprive myself of that as well, you know. Mm. Or you'll feel like okay, oh my god, and oh it looks delicious, you know, that veg biryani looks delicious. So I take a little bit of it. I still eat it slowly, and I I I relish it. So that's how it is. I but I eat more of like veggies or. There's a lot of choices when you go out, actually. So mm. you can make uh, make use of that. And uh, if you're not able to work out, that's okay. But portion control really helped me that one and a half months when I was there in my native. And uh, that's how I think I was able to lose that weight. Absolutely, Pavi. And uh, meal plating skills definitely helped you. And again, we focused on adding more to your plate. We focused on first yes. figuring out uh, meeting your protein requirement, making sure we are you are eating a variety of vegetables and fruits, right? And as we added more to your plate, the the carb composition automatically adjusted itself, right? Yes. You could not still eat huge quantities of rice and make room for the protein and the vegetables. So kind of sorted uh, by itself. Right? Yes, I think I did even tell you, right? Uh, I I I had uh, more. I think one time when I was I was really full, I didn't eat I was not able to eat complete I thought okay if I eat more I'll feel more bloated so my plate had a little bit of more rice and everything I didn't go and put more curry or something I think I we had this discussion as well so that's how I was at the time I said like no I I am not able to because I felt that I'm full I stopped at the point so even Mm. now I feel like I'm full I I stop at that point I don't force myself like taking another serving or I have to finish everything in my plate I so even so to do that I do my meal plating properly I add little if I'm not full I take if I am full I don't go and take another portion so that's how I am 
but if, if sometimes if i hungry i take vegetables you know that's already there but not more of rice or something you know because that makes me feel bloated sometimes mm again the the awareness about your body how you know paying heed to your bodily cues uh, understanding what makes you feel full where you know what causes bloating where do you want to stop all of these decisions that happened you during your meal right actually helped you as well yes uh, now pavi what was an aha moment for you while working on your transformation uh aha every every moment was aha moment for me vidya i would not like uh, say this is this is where i felt the aha moment or during my portion control or when i lost like 5 kg i actually you know uh, even uh, anything all wins are aha moments for me okay because that made me push me to the next win you know so mm. i i would not say okay i i will not say okay uh, i think sunday i took my weight and everything uh, that's i would not say oh my god because i am not a person who like okay i achieved something now no i still have a long way to go okay even that i have to be consistent over the years so everything will be an aha moment for me okay but the learnings were all an aha moment for me because i i mastered or whatever you taught me you know that that is an aha moment for me you know and i'm being consistent every day that's an every day that's an aha moment for me so now i finished my arabic workout for like what 30 35 minutes that's an aha moment for me because mm. i might have uh, said like no i have vidya's call i have to get ready i have to get my daughter ready actually i had my daughter ready and everything but i could have given reason i could do it in the evening but no i just still went in the half an hour so that's an aha, aha moment for me not wow. i cannot point on this one this one so that's not an aha moment beautifully beautifully <laughs> articulated uh, pavi and again a very very important insight there um you had every reason to give up right you have a, you had every reason to actually give yourself excuses and say hey sorry i cannot show up but every single time that you showed up for your practices was an aha moment for you and a positive feeling that actually egged you on to show up even more right? yes accounting for small wins that is something that we did all the time through the program right yes. what is your small win uh, what do you actually feel proud of right so that actually motivated you to continue keep uh, you know, to show up and actually see even more progress uh, very nicely uh, shared right uh, right there uh, pavi thank you for that i just want to say something quick every day there is going to be something coming up okay so like either today i had a road block like i planned for a hour or one and a half hours of a workout you know so you're going to have a road block okay that should not set you back even if you are like okay 45 minutes you still have 45 minutes do it it still have half an hour you can do it you still have 20 mm. minutes do it if mm. you feel like that the rest of the day you're going to be busy you still mm. you you just showed up you said like showing up uh, imperfectly so that's how it is it's not imperfect you showed up that's perfect If, even though it's 15 minutes 20 minutes or 5 minutes you still showed up so that's a win that's a aha moment for everyone i would say wow thank you thank you so much for this and i'm sure the ladies who are watching this are going to feel super inspired and motivated to go behind practices uh, that they have for themselves now quickly pavi i want to you know this program is all about deep health like you rightly mentioned at the beginning of the call that we don't just focus, focus on physical health but mental emotional health as well so can you tell me a couple of ratings um, you know uh, physical health where would you rate yourself before the program and where are you now on a scale of 1 to 10 please of course friend like i am like uh, physical health wise like uh, i think i am i'm ready to take me my, my uh, next annual checkup really quick to see like where i am you know so that is one thing actually you know like uh, i i have to prioritize myself okay so i i thought i think some somewhere around the the last two three years i didn't prioritize my health so uh, i felt like really bad i neglected my health so physically like right now uh, i got an awareness that i am responsible for my body so i have to make sure that physically like i'm good because i have two kids i have i have a family you know that i want to travel along like take them out go with them for trips be with them for the next 30 to 40 years so physically i have to be uh, in a in perfect, physically i have to be good so i made sure that every day what i eat the choices i make and that's going to reflect me okay i know at the end of the year you do an annual check up that number I, i i want to see that number within whatever range it is so 
i feel even if i take the check up now i think there should there will be no issue so that's that's what i i think right now so physically i'm really good i would really rate like i'm in 10 you know no issue where were you before uh, pavi before the program definitely if there's something less than one i would say less than one that's how huge, i would huge huge progress right i mean yeah. i've seen amazing progress in terms of your physical health who oh, i could see your yeah. dog <laughs> Yeah, she wants to go inside. Let's go. That's Lizzy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you were talking about your energy levels, Pavi. Yes, my energy levels were very low, you know, before I joined the program. But now it's like at an excellent level, I would say. You know, even though I finished a very bad, I was bad as workout in the morning. You know, it was like uh, I still like. Uh, not that tired i feel like moving a lot right now i have a lot of work till the end of the day but at the night i i try to sleep like those 8 hours i need the sleep you know so that the next day i can keep myself pushing so i would definitely uh, say my energy levels are high right now physically i'm very very good i'm active so right now if i have to take a check my annual health check i think i should be in a good place rocking yeah not rocking, to, not probably. to boast about it but yes no that's that's something that you should be feel really proud of because that's what you work towards uh, pavi so how about mental health where would you rate yourself before and now before it was like very low you know i would get easily influenced by people talking negative i would i would like tend to go into uh, emotionally i will be like drained you know crying why is this happening to me why is this happening to me this is how i was before the program you know so i think you would have known like a uh, lot of things you know family wise i have i i always have lot of pressure you know over the years i think i handled it in a different way because i was not here but when you mm. stay in india when you're close to your family you'll have lot of emotional emotional not drama i don't want to use it it's bad but uh, emotional things happening so you will feel you'll fall as a victim for all those emotional dramas and your your energy get drained and mentally you will feel it will make you feel weak and a uh, lot of negative thoughts pop up that was i was before that i mean before we started the program a lot of negative things uh, after my pregnancy or during my pregnancy i was like a lot of people influencing and uh, you know it was giving me like mentally i was like uh, i was not able to handle anything you know any small small thing that happens i i break down so mm. that was that what happened you know so uh now it's not the same you know i i think uh, i can handle anything i just pause and react to it think it's really worth to like uh, uh i mean go to a very bad feeling like oh my god what do i do oh no i feel bad right now what should i do and uh, do i have to i don't judge people now i don't like you know i i i actually now i've improved a lot you know I make uh, i don't react immediately with anger i think i pause and react uh see what i could say do at that situation and handle it handle it uh, smoothly not like rushing into like and rushing into things like uh, and breaking down oh no I, i why did i do this uh, so, and i also stayed away from uh, negative people mm you know because drawing boundaries i draw i draw a lot of boundaries now you know like uh, i think uh, when i i when i when i finished college i started work and then i i went to us right after that i think that the 10 years there and after coming here i was not able to handle a lot of things i was emotionally breaking down okay and uh, and i i the environment influenced me influence the people in this environment influenced me a lot you know mm. making me feel like i'm not i cannot do this i cannot do that uh, why are you like this why are you not able to control this and, you know and uh, breaking me down but now if they do the same thing to me uh i i i rise up above and say hey i don't want to talk about this this is how i am i think i'm perfectly okay you know so uh i've been getting comments you lost weight uh, we don't like you seeing like this you know you should be little chubby uh okay I, if you want to feel i can't do that this is how i am you have to accept it okay i feel happy like how where i am right now so so you, you're going to get i learned one thing like you're going to get comments from each and every people you know it's how you handle it and you should not break down or like uh, you know even if you talk back to them right they it's it's i don't think it's worth it you know it's like it's like waste of your time or energy so i is just like okay i just like okay okay yeah that's it 
So I, I don't go further into discussions anymore, you know. Uh, wherever I need to talk, I do talk. Wherever I don't want to talk, I stay away from those situations. I don't talk, you know. And uh, so that at the end of the day, I found it impacting my family, my kids, you know. Mm. So I, I used to fight a lot with my husband, my kids. And now even my husband gets angry, right? Yeah, I'll be like this. Oh, okay, you're angry with me, then fine. Okay. <laughs> I stay calm. I stay calm. Let him let him cool down, you know. I don't lose it now. So even if he now comes, he bangs the door. And what are you doing? Why are you not giving? If he says something also, I'll not get angry. I'll be like, okay. Later then we'll talk, you know, we'll talk it out. But other than that, uh, it impacts your family. That's that I found that out. And, and uh, I didn't want that happening. So I want to be happy. You know, I want to be happy. Stay away from gossips, you know, mm. and uh, stay away from negative thoughts, negative people. I cannot handle this uh, emotional dramas. You know, there are certain things that you can't do, you know, in certain situations that even though you go talk or you say something, you know, people are not going to change. Mm. You, it's, it's, it's not worth it. You're going to lose your time and energy doing that. Rather, you do something useful, something that is, that makes you happy. So that's where I am right now with my mental health, right? Wow. Two numbers, Pavi. Where do you think you were before and where are you now? Of course, like uh, one before and ten. I would give that always. Now, amazing, what, amazing yeah. insights here. Uh, thank you, Pavi. So, so couple of things that you shared is first is drawing boundaries, staying away from negative people and negative thoughts. And there are situations where you will be able to stay in control and actually call the shots. But there may also be situations where it's beyond your control. And how do you handle those? You know, with the skill of pausing and understanding how you want to respond, prioritizing your mental sanity and peace. Yes. And again, your happiness comes first uh, and your prior family's happiness comes next, right? How, when you prioritize those, what kind of a decision you want to make at this point in time, right? Brilliant uh, insights there. How about emotional uh, health, uh, Pavi, in terms of stress and uh, emotional breakdowns? Where were you before? Where are you now? Give me two numbers. I think the last breakdown I had was, I think, two months post the program that we had. After that time was really bad. I would really give that one. And after that, right now, it's like I would give 10. Yesterday, there was a big emotional thing going on in my family. I didn't break down, you know. But uh, I handled it pretty well. So... Right. And a lot of things happened recently. I think my husband is also like, uh, I think he's doing this night shift. He's getting cranky like a kid and during the time in the morning. So <laughs> I, I used to be very silly earlier, you know, maybe, I mean, six months before, eight months before, I used to like cry even if he shouts at me. But right now it's not the same. So it's like 10, I would say. I don't want to break down for all these silly things. And I don't think it's worth it going for an emotional breakdown. There will be a situation, but I don't want, want for anything like uh, that's not really like worth it to break down you know so uh, it's at the end of the day it's your everything can be sorted out you know mm. within your family anything mm. outside your family that's not might not be on your control but within the family you can because I do have an understanding husband you know so we talk it out and he talks to me first sometimes so I know he'll come and talk to me so I don't go and talk to him <laughs> so that's how I am <laughs> so he'll come talk to me we'll get that sorted and we'll discuss and everything so and I think he 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 noticed that as well you know I used to do that before I don't cry a lot I don't break down a lot so that's something he's really like uh, he was surprised to see me doing that wow look at you now Pavi I know the story about you was so different when we started the program and now what strikes what is really striking is how much more stronger you have gotten mentally and you've grown so much resilient, uh, you know, and then I'm, I'm seeing that the way you're talking, there's so much clarity, confidence, conviction, right? Uh, way to go, Pavi, seriously. Now, relationships, can you talk about your two numbers, if you can give, based on the impact of your emotional regulation on your relationships with people around you, right? Give me two numbers. Where were you before? You're already saying your relationship with your spouse has improved a lot, with your children has improved a lot. Where are you now? I would definitely uh, say like uh, eight or nine. I'll not give 10 because like a uh, uh, lot of people don't like a new me, so I can't help it, especially my mom. <laughs> because I think they're all like a little bit old-fashioned. They want to like shout at someone, you shout it. 
okay i'm saying something about this person you have to shout with me i don't do that okay so obviously she's not happy with me <laughs> so she doesn't like to change me so and but anyways from i mean i've been like that for a long time and this and it didn't help her any further anyway so my husband yeah obviously the relationship has like yeah that's been really good my kids i think it's more good you know uh, especially with my daughter and uh, earlier i used to be very down i don't even talk to her much you know like i sometimes i think uh, i'll be depressed i she'll be just doing her own stuff and i didn't focus much on her but now i could see that uh, she's coming to me talking to me and uh, we are having a good conversation we she's like uh, she knows like okay mommy is talking to me now mommy is listening to me now we can play with mommy and yesterday night we were doing some activity at 9:30 to 10:30 in the night oh, wow. like we were uh, if she wanted to do mommy let's do this and uh, so i think that 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 might be one of the reason for my daughter actually you know to join this program because i felt like i i lost somewhere i was lost mm. before the program i didn't mm. depression and uh, i mean having another kid and uh, no help and uh, and uh, your kid is not like um, i mean we're not talking to your kid as well right not, not much and uh, i i lost that grip somewhere with my daughter during my pregnancy it was hard i didn't even Uh, i i was not supposed to move i was always mm. in bed okay so that bonding got lost like she was more attached to her dad now she is like attached to she's like she, she wants me as well you know so it's it's good feel my relationships have improved of, of all the relationship more than my husband i would say like my daughter i'm having a good bond with her right now okay so that's how beautiful thing. yeah how beautiful is that pavi seriously it's yeah. making me very very emotional to see the transformation that you have made uh, personally for yourself and the way it's impacting your relationship with your daughter how how that you were you were bogged down by so many issues uh, pavi when you joined the program and just focusing on yourself and taking a few action steps has kind of created that mental space for you to actually engage with the people around you in a in a much better way yes right and your daughter is seeing that she is actually seeing a different mom around her right who's not not shouting anymore who's not losing her sanity who's not uh, you know who's being very very calm and doing uh, you know prioritizing herself she actually sees you also do the meditation and the workouts how she would get on the treadmill too sometimes actually. yes yes she right? does the treadmill and when we went to my brother's uh, gym she was working out there the battle right? ropes the battle yeah. ropes right she was doing she, it yeah i think uh, she was the, she was she lifted even a 4 kg dropping ball you know i was oh surprised my, my brother was saying don't lift it it's heavy okay so she but she still put it and she she was putting it down she was taking it and she was treating it like a regular ball and uh, also like she works when i was I, when i'm doing my arabic workout for one hour she will sit next to me with her she'll play in the bed but she'll not come out mm. she'll tell her go out go play with your toys she'll not go out at all she'll be sitting next to me whatever mm. whenever i'm working out okay so i mean uh, in i've seen that for arabic coach she'll come join me in, in between she's like mama give me so i want to listen to the music you're listening so i'll give it to her so and uh, she's uh, she she likes to she's also doing some workout dance and everything and uh, so yeah she's also having fun but i'm surprised and and the healthy food then that's a very good example you know i mean obviously in school they taught her as well you know but still uh, i'm surprised that a four year old is saying like to even your uh, Our grandparents, no, no, don't eat that. That's like it's going to give you stomach pain. Stop it! Don't eat it. No, no, no. Oh, and she, wow. she, she took it away. She just didn't say no. She just took the uh, bowl away from them. Nobody is going to eat. Not even my brother. That's what she did. Mm. Mm. Very nice, uh, Pavi. And uh, I, I always say this: uh, children do what they see you do, not yes. what you tell them to do. right so when the school environment does something and the home environment actually mimics the school environment then it makes it so much easier for the child to not exist with any kind of confusing thoughts and actually make it happen for them so brilliant work there and you uh, rightfully pointed out that how your environment was playing a huge role in terms of your behaviors early on right when we joined the program so can you tell me how you feel about your environmental health now what would you rate yourself before and now before it was like really was one but now i would still give 7 8 there environment right there'll be lot of situations that gonna happen no matter what it's how you handle it 
sometimes i do lose my cool but sometimes i do pause and i react a little bit later sometimes i i react immediately because there are situations where you will re- you will immediately react okay so i would really not give 10 but i would say like somewhere on 7 or 8 you know i still not like completely like i would not say i'm really good but uh, to be honest i would say 7 fantastic for me i mean you're still doing the best you can in yes. terms of the circumstances and adapting really well right you're you are again choosing the kind of response that would actually help you so a uh, big uh, thumbs up from me uh, about that mm-hmm. uh, so quickly i just want to ask your feedback about your coaching experience uh, favi what was the best part about me as your coach so i when i started before the program right uh, i thought okay so the coaching is all about workout okay the diet plan that you you're going to lay down to me but the best part is apart from i think every trainer will uh, focus on the workout the diet but uh, you are the only coach i've heard like you can still have coffee because for coffee is my favorite so absolute favorite you can still have your two cups of coffee and uh, who told me because all the trainers i worked with or the nutritionists i worked with they said no coffee milk is bad for you it's absolutely bad zero no you should not touch it you have to eat only this so the first trainer who has told me like uh, okay you can have your cup of coffee as well you know and also like you can eat this so that's the best part of the coaching you know there was no uh, uh, like uh, control over the food like you should like eat this you should eat this you you didn't ask me to like restrict myself not to eat this so so that's a good part of the coaching and of course like uh, the second thing is like workout more i think workout at one point you you'll get used to it so this this program is more of like your uh, mental health as well as your choice smart choices you make when it comes to food and learn about your body you know how your body react you know when you eat certain type of food and and how you feel you know after eating that food so those are the things that like i'm am i'm amazed you know that uh, i've never seen anyone uh, uh, giving so many insights okay like uh, this is what actually a coach should be doing i didn't see any of my uh, previous coaches do or do about it like uh, nobody cares about what happens in your home you know your mental health or what or uh, how you feel you know whether you're up or you're down or uh, like you have situations at home but you still have to do five days of work out a week you still have to eat this correct then only you even uh, there's a uh, lady next to my house okay she goes she's following the diet her coach is asking why you didn't lose three to one kg this week so you are not that kind of coach but because uh, i think uh, in order for your uh, i mean to i mean in order for you to reach your goal your mental check and everything has to be in place you know what you eat your mental check and uh, of course at even if you do 30 i think you told me the 30 minutes of workout also it's okay what you eat and how you are feeling for the day you know so that that all makes a huge impact in your body that's what i felt you know so this coaching mm. was like an ex- extraordinary experience for me you know it it's like an eye opener for me that's what i would say because uh, now i may i have higher energy levels i'm able to prioritize and organize things even if there's some kind of thing coming in the last moment and okay i know i have to push you things to the later week i don't get worried about it earlier i used to be oh my god I, i'm not doing it by this week so i push few things to the next week i'm okay i'm okay mm. i'm fine <clears throat> and i feel great about the workouts and i like to do variations and you don't say like no you have to do this workout no you have to do this workout there's no restrictions there i think the current trend is like weights and hits you have to lift heavy then only i've seen people in us one of the one of the lady i used to work with she's like she only does weights okay she'll never move around no cardio but she eat regular food and uh, she's expecting because she she was told that with weights you can reduce your weight mm. so so there are a lot of things i think people are missing nowadays you know so mm. these are these things has to be taught as part of your uh, coaching program in order for them to understand their body and uh, it's in the consistency and everything right so uh, i think that's missing in other i my previous experience and you really uh, this uh, coaching phase from end from the beginning to the end we covered everything which is like a part of your entire life you know for the next till your end you have to follow this you know 
consistently mm. that's you'll be good at the same time you'll be happy as well you know and uh, physically mentally so i think uh, this is the best decision i have ever made you know come coaching to you i'm happy i didn't choose any any anyone else you know so <laughs> yeah thank you so much for me seriously <laughs> this is amazing to hear um, so basically to summarize uh, the holistic um, program is what uh, really clicked for you where we focused on all aspects of your health not just physical health um, and um, also the skills that you learned these are life skills that you're going to keep up no matter what right even if you're yes. off the program it's giving you the confidence that hey these are things that i practiced day in and day out and i can actually keep up with these so the, that's again giving you the confidence um and if you were to tell me how uh, how, how do you feel about the support and accountability that you got uh, pavi uh, can i uh, uh, stop the recording for a minute uh, can you please stop yeah, the yeah, recording sure. plug in yes So can you come back with the question again with the hunger sorry yeah so uh, your feedback about the kind of support and accountability you got from me pavi yes so uh, i i think uh, i was little hesitant to contact you you know <laughs> i you know we meet every two weeks i i always feel that uh, i'm a kind of person like if i have to reach out everyone has their work you know so whether i should i know you are my coach you said you can reach out to you anytime i i see i used to feel like uh, maybe i think uh, it's not the right time let me wait okay why should i bother her maybe i should wait till the next call but one time i felt like uh, okay let let me see if i message her if she'll respond that's when i think uh, we had a quick call and you were able to talk to me even if even it was outside your 9 uh, to 5 timings you know so that i really appreciate that you know you know that's how like a coach should be like uh, the support you gave for me even during your offline time, i mean uh, i mean apart from your work timings that is like not everybody will uh, do that you know so i i'm really happy that uh, you were able to support me when in time of need like when i was emotionally uh, broken down and uh, you you had a lot of suggestions and you advised me so that was really helpful so that support is like really required from a coach i would say okay not this not during the work hours like because not everything will happen during the work hours right so something might will happen and you you should be able to reach out to them and uh, okay so that was like uh, that was really nice of you you know i could and that made me feel like i could reach out to you with any problems that i have any mm. roadblocks <clears throat> any any questions so i sh- i should i will should not hesitate at least drop her a message don't think of waiting till the next call you can contact with her okay even now and she at least she might be able to respond you know i can i don't want to call you but i i message you most of the time because that's what i would really do so whenever you have time you will respond to me really quick so thank you and, and every time i sent you a message you were uh, you you were able to respond within a day at least so that was really nice of you so given that you have other work your personal life and your client other clients to look after so that was i really appreciate the your the support i got from you even though i i i didn't want to bother you like uh, all the time but if i bother you a lot of time i'm really sorry but sometimes no. actually even i don't i i don't get back to you you still followed up with me that was a great support you know i i i will have some work with my kids you know i'll usually forget it whenever i have time you know responding back to messages is really tough for me you know so that's what like i used to say like i'm really really sorry every time i use the word sorry because i am so i might have responded to you really late but still you were fine you were you, you really like uh, you you were like uh, with a smile you will send a message video message uh, that what was really nice of you thank you thank you for we really appreciate uh, so you were Uh, really happy about the accountability that you got with me and the support yes. uh, that I offered. You were following up with me. That is really good, actually. That's that is no question. I might have been uh, a little bit uh, late in your messenger replying back. Considering I I don't want to play the mommy card, but it's true. I have to play the mommy card <laughs> because your kids become the priorities, and you have to figure out what you can do later and what you have to do right now. So that's what happened, actually. Absolutely, Pavi. I, I perfectly understand. So uh, there are a lot of women who uh, I have conversations with, and they are thinking twice to invest in themselves. What would you say to those people, uh, Pavi? I actually, you know, even I was one of the person I thought twice before investing in myself. Uh, is it required? Because uh, my family won't understand that. 
ப்ராப்ளம் இட்ஸ் அ சொசைட்டி இதே லைக் ஓ எதுக்கு இவ்ளோ பைசா கொடுத்து இது வேஸ்ட் பண்றா அவளுக்கு எதுக்கு இது தேவை இல்ல அப்படி அதுதான் வந்துட்டு was usually everybody's conversation i kept a low key of this portion except my husband nobody knew like for that uh, they don't even know how much i'm paying or whatever it is because it's none of the business and second i don't want to get those kind of criticism because mm. it's my my choice i made okay and i don't regret it because i i have had a wonderful experience and i would definitely suggest it to uh, my friends or my cousins but obviously i don't want to suggest it to my cousins because they're all stuck with the talk what the uh, soup diet or whatever whatever the fasting diet they are doing i'm not sure they eat only soup once in every 48 hours so <laughs> so uh, i it's like uh, i would really suggest that but i don't think uh, they i think now there's like a lot of things that are like showing up for free free consultation free workout videos free diet is like uh, like 48 hour fasting 24 hour fasting i think nobody i think people are like lot of they are hesitant to spend, spend the money but they they don't know that you have to really like you know if you you need to invest on yourself okay so they might think that this coaching is all about just uh, reaching your goal or uh, why do i have to invest 6 months you know i don't have that time people are all running back like the time and also save money at the same time but i think uh, they will not realize it now if i had not taken this program uh, i now and I, i i think i made the right decision of doing taking the program 6 months post my second baby mm. because uh, uh, now i know how i have to i i know how to handle the rest of my lifetime how i need to be consistent with my lifestyle the choices i make with my family mental physical emotion everything i'm talking about so i I'm, i'm happy i made the choice at the right time because uh it's it's good because kids are going to be inspired by you as you said so and i am ha- glad that i invested on myself now i've learned a lot it is a huge life skill that i've learned from you uh i would really advise all women to take up your coaching program because it's just not about uh, setting goal and losing weight okay it's far beyond that they unless until they they have that conversation with you about this program or they go through the six months they will not understand and it is very much important to invest on yourself okay it will mm. it's like an you will understand more about yourself you know so that's what this program is all about uh so definitely i will uh, suggest you to a lot of people actually who will who's ready to invest you know on their sem on their self and It's, it's just not the transformation or body transformation it's your whole it's how you feel you know your mental physical and emotional everything will be changed at the end of this program so and uh, as i told you right so i'm happy with the investment that i made and i would like to continue as well in future you know right now i'm sad that i'm leaving <laughs> but definitely once i go back to you as you know as i said i will uh, definitely uh, come back to this program also i'm going to be like sending you my progress once in a while you know at least once in a month saying how you are how am i doing and uh, so to let so that will make you feel happy as a coach that uh, even after uh, their client graduated they have taken that as a life skill and mm. they have taken that through the entire uh, life journey you know so following it through the entire life journey so that is be a proud coach moment for you so definitely i Absolutely. will not fail <laughs> and there's no way i'm falling back to my old habits i'm telling you right now <laughs> to my coach you know so i'll make sure that uh, i'll make you proud absolutely pavi i would really love that uh, you know the periodical updates that you can uh, share with me and uh, really really powerful words that you shared there about how it is important to invest in yourself and you may not know the importance now but once you do it you will be very very thankful and uh, happy that you actually did that for yourself um and i i you know i really appreciate this because it's sometimes hard for me to share the value uh, in a conversation with a new prospect uh, because like you rightly said unless you go through the program you're not going to know to what level you're going to transform right you may be coming in with expectations or perspectives that hey you know what i'm just going to drop a few kilos and probably see some uh, body composition changes is what the expectation typically is 
um, based on how it has been around us. But this is a one of a kind program which focuses on building sustainable habits and uh, focusing on health promoting behaviors, working on physical, mental, emotional, relational health aspects as well. So thank you, Pavi. So I have uh, I've written down some strengths of yours that actually helped uh, in your transformation and in this journey that we are on together. So would that be okay if I were, if I can share your strengths? Sure, sir, definitely, Vidya. I would really so, love to know if I really have the, I mean, maybe I do have few of the strengths, but I really want to know your perspective, you know, how, how, how I mean, as a coach, you would have analyzed my behavior, analyzed me and how I was in the past eight months. So obviously you would have uh, known my strengths. So actually I'm eagerly waiting to uh, hear from you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Pavi. So you can absolutely grab a water break. I know you drink a lot of water, so yes. I'm going to be talking for a little bit. To, uh, to all your clients, right? So I, I drink a lot of water during Sri Vidya's <laughs> with just one on one because uh, I, I drink at least four liters of water every day. Yeah. Uh, so, Pavi, so basically, you there are a few superpowers and strengths that you came with, which we kind of honed and uh, developed during this program. And you also built a few more strengths during the course of the program, also. So, one of the few most important things that I really appreciate in you is the openness and honesty in interaction and communication. Uh, without which none of this would have happened, right? Again, it takes two to um, two hands to clap, two to tango, right? Um, I may be this coach who is available, but unless the client actually puts forth their effort as well uh, and keeps up the communication, it's very hard for me to know what's going on. So I really appreciate that in you. Uh, your commitment, uh, you know, you're extremely hardworking, your consistency, you pick when you realize that this is what is going to work for me, you actually stuck with it. You stayed on track, right? Uh, that is a quality that I really appreciate in you and your persistence. You never once gave up. Again, like I mentioned, you shrank the practice down, but never was a day where you did not show up for your practice, right? And your determination to get after your goals, you picked a goal and you said, I no matter what, I'm going to do this for myself. This is my time right, to focus on my uh, transformation and I'm going to get this done. So the determination is something very, very awe-inspiring, uh, Pavi. The other thing, the superpower that you carried, like I mentioned before, is your planning and organizational skills. You were able to quickly anticipate roadblocks that would come in the next two weeks. I mean, we didn't have to look so far ahead as a year. We All we had to do was, during every coaching conversation, what do you anticipate as a roadblock in the next two weeks? How can we quickly pivot and make sure we set new goals for the next two weeks, right? So you were able to anticipate, strategize, plan around it, overcome your challenges, and then again, show up with uh, for the next call, sharing your small wins, right? So way to go. And uh, definitely your uh, mindset that went through a huge shift, Pavi. I definitely have to call out here where you kind of shed that rigidity and strict mindset and you operated with a flexible mindset, right? Being very, very adaptable. Um, operating with a growth mindset to uh, making this change for yourself and overcoming challenges, stepped out of your comfort zone. It was definitely not comfortable for you, right? To make this yes. change. It's, it's a very, very messy process. It's very difficult. It's very hard. And the only way to tackle that is, is taking small steps, right? So you stepped out of your comfort zone, improved your resilience. I mean, huge, huge improvements in your resilience. The way you bounce back from challenges, from setbacks, you did not take forever to get back on track. Quickly, you know, the next day you kind of thought, okay, what is it that is under my control that I can do today? How can I quickly get back on track? That was your mindset. Uh, cognitive flexibility, again, that speaks volumes about your open mindset and the openness to change, right? That is what cognitive flexibility is all about. And um, relationship with food, your body, the way, uh, you know, your mind uh, the scale, all of that also went through huge improvements. That's your big strength, again, to face it, right? Uh, these are all demons in our head and we have to face and kind of understand, challenge those beliefs. If they've existed for a really long time, you want to challenge and ask why they are existing. What is, what is the new belief that you can adapt that will help you keep progressing towards your goal? So again, really appreciate that. Physical strength and endurance that went up really uh, well, uh, you know, keeping up with your daily walks and slowly how the progression happened towards strength training as well. And uh, meditation, how that helped you with your emotional regulation. That's again, something you picked up as a small five minute action 
it's okay you, you're showing up for 2 to 3 minutes but you've been extremely consistent and that's paid off so much uh, pavi in terms of your uh, emotional mental health as well um so thank you so much oh for your God, trust and actually there there's lots of things i really didn't know about myself you know so actually um, thank you vidya for all your support you know so it it it, it i am a different person right now because of you and everything changed you know for me like uh, my view of life you know and uh, how to handle situation and uh, how should i prioritize myself and at the same time how should i manage the managing skills and everything you know so it's it's like i seen like i've improved a lot you know i've learned a lot from you and i think i really thank you so much for your support you know this journey was absolutely great one of the best best decision i've ever made wow. and a little thing about the women the ladies the clients that you are uh, working with right so it was for me like a lot of people think like it's okay you know a lot of things you go to the entire from the beginning of your childhood till now be it family related work related uh, maybe there's a lot of pressure uh, i i actually i have one maybe something i i had a strong i had a strong positive thing in me like when from my childhood uh, i didn't share this with anyone uh, except few people you know i was abused when i was a kid in my when my in my childhood okay so uh, it was it was tough for me to forget it you know and uh, my ab- and when i was growing with my parents the it was not exactly in a happy household you know so it's your mind that you set in you know it's like just because these things happen to me i should not i should like i should go back i should set myself back and i should be like that i should not i should be like uh, like depressed all the time it's not like that there is there are a lot of things that happen to you you know to men and uh, when they're growing up like lot in work and anything or anything whatever it's related to uh, you can you you have that in yourself to come up you know it's all in here not like nothing is going to stop you okay so you really have to focus on yourself and think positive and move move forward that's what you have to do don't just sit because this happened to you this happened to me my in laws told this okay i'm going through this it's really tough those are temporary okay so it's up to you to decide whether you want to lead a life with your family have to lead you you have to put your mind on it okay these things happen to me okay so only few people know i i just wanted to share it because it was not a perfect upbringing for me i really experienced a lot of things when i was growing up and uh, from there to here you know i'm i'm taking i'm taking everything positively right now okay be it anything even small small things and I'm, i'm so happy to do it okay there might be small setbacks there might be something that's going to happen in your life but you have to face it okay it's up to you you have to be strong for yourself you have to pause and think what to do next and uh, overall because at the end of the day you have to make yourself happy okay so everything is temporary so be happy be positive and uh, all the best and uh, vidya is going to have give you a good experience <laughs> i mean with this program so is you are in for a good uh, roller coaster ride that's what i would say wow amazing amazing uh, pavi and uh, i'm truly truly sorry i did not know this uh, about i mean i we never had a conversation about i i don't I... usually talk talk about it much with you but it did happen but uh, it's okay it's i'm way past that you know and uh, it's how and i think now i know how to raise my kids in you know it's all those are all experiences that that happened to you that's an mm. experience for you mm. you have to see how to be careful right now you know how to cha- how to tra- i mean how to talk to your kids and everything it's all it's part of process you know mm. so so that's that's very few people know about it but and still i got out of it it's like uh, everyone ha- will have uh, something bad that happened in their uh, childhood or when you're growing up but that's not an excuse i would say okay mm. you you that that should not keep you in a dark dark place all the time just because it happened to you i i don't want to be like that you know so i i learn from things and i would uh, definitely like you know push myself forward and because at the end of the day i have to keep myself happy and i have to keep my family happy that's what matters mm. to me the most mm. you know 
Wow, yeah, so, amazingly courageous and uh, bold of you to share this uh, vulnerability, uh, vulnerable moment with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Lots of hugs and much you, love, yeah. love to you. And, <laughs> and the way you have taken this positively, you know, you're someone who learns from experiences and moves ahead, right? Not letting it bog you down and pull you down. You want to rise above it and take it as an experience where you're learning from it and so that you, you can actually bring up your child better. Yes. I would love to quote uh, Jay Krishnamurti here. He said, uh, don't be like your parents. If your parents, right? You want to learn and you don't want to be like your parents. You want to learn from whatever mistakes that are happening and be different. Be a different parent to your child, right? So um, amazing insights there, Pavi. And thank you for sharing this strong message with all the ladies who are struggling to prioritize themselves and make this a priority for themselves, right? So again, um, for, for us to be happy, it's very important, right? And when yes. we are happy, we can keep the others around us happy as well. So maybe you may think that this is a selfish interest, but think about this. When you are happy, the people around you are also going to be happy, happy right? You're yes. going to have a nice environment around you. So um, definitely, I mean, I would love to join along with Pavi and spread this message that it's extremely important to take care of ourselves. Most importantly, our mental uh, and emotional that health is true. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Pavi, for sharing this. And I would love to work with you. And uh, yes, you have, you're going away uh, to better pastures to the US uh, and uh, wishing you the best in your journey. Thank ahead. You, and my doors are always open whenever you want to come back into the program uh, to refresh your skills or to learn more skills. I'm always here. Definitely with me. Before going back, I would definitely love to meet you once, you know, somewhere. Sure, sure, so definitely. hopefully we could catch up in person. I think it was like, uh, I think last time we met years. was in a few years. Few years. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So a few years. The unit we met and then after that, we think it is all online now. So yeah, before uh, I go back to US, I hopefully I could meet you, you know, and then I would, I would love to meet you and talk to you in person as well. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Absolutely, Pavi. Let's make it happen. Okay. Sure. Take care. Thank you so much. And uh, Take care, Vidya. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure.